What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2022 Chevy Equinox, courtesy of Apple Chevrolet in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because it has been completely redesigned for the 2022 model year. And it does look good in my personal opinion. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fill, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Equinox. First one being the LS starting at $26,995, LT for $28,095, RS for $31,295. And lastly, the Premier starting at $32,195. And by the way, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. You can add all wheel drive if you wanted to do that, simply add $1,600 to any of those prices. But regardless of configuration that you go with, the power plant on the Equinox is going to be the same. Powering the little beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 170 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 203 pound feet of torque, sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six speed automatic, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.2 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 31 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 25 in the city, 30 then on the highway for the all wheel drive, taking regular unleaded fuel all right you guys here it is here is all straight away in three two one go all right we got a little bit of a downhill so that certainly assisted with that but it's not the quickest thing in the world, but it'll certainly get the job done for merging onto the highway. So you definitely shouldn't have any issues there. And quite honestly, for the person that's buying this type of SUV, I'm not sure they're really concerned with racing this thing anyway. So definitely shouldn't have any issues in merging onto the highway. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 16 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 16 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at 121 feet. So as far as braking feel goes, it's actually really good. There's definitely a firmness to it. It's not a soft braking feel. There's no dead spots in it. So definitely don't mind the braking feel on this thing. It definitely feels more like a sports sedan, quite honestly, because because of the firmness of the braking, I'll put it that way. Then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back four link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. I usually don't take these vehicles for that long of a test drive, but still, been perfectly fine so no issues there as far as cabin noise goes again it's pretty much on par for this segment actually i would say even a little bit above average just because a lot of times at higher speeds with some of its uh competitors they get a little bit of wind noise coming in through the windows but this one definitely not all that bad there and that could be due in part because there is an acoustic laminated front windshield so that's certainly going to contribute to that and as far as steering feel goes i would say it's pretty much average for the segment it's definitely not a loose steering feel like you typically find on a lot of other suvs but it's it's not, of course, the heavy steering feel either, like you would find at a Camaro or a Corvette, of course. So definitely, it's perfectly fine. I don't have any issues there. Then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. And actually, those headrests can get pushed down a little bit. They're not pushed down right now, but so you're definitely not gonna have any issues with visibility there at all. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Chevy Equinox. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Chevy Equinox, completely redesigned for the 2022 model year. Definitely for the better. Looks pretty darn good in my opinion, but let's go ahead and start up front on this one here. Upgraded front grille and bumper, of course, since it is completely redesigned. Black front grille is going to come with the LS, LT, and RS trim levels with the RS getting RS left within that front grille of course as well chrome front grille then is going to come with the premier trim level as expected led headlights are going to come standard for every single trim level across the board you gotta love that for added illumination at night automatic feature coming with those headlights meaning those headlights will turn on automatically for you whenever it detects that it's starting to get dark out led daytime running lights also coming standard you will get fog lights if 
you go with the premier trim level that is how you're going to go ahead and get that and to the very bottom you will find some matte black cladding to kind of round out the front end but again that pretty much rounds out the front let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the equinox all right so now since we are around to the side of this one roof rails are going to come with the rs and premier trim levels so therefore we do not unfortunately have those with us here today black window surrounds are going to come standard you will find some equinox lettering found on the front doors of the equinox of course when it comes to those side mirrors they will be power adjustable and finished in matte black if you were to go with the ls or lt trim levels then they will be body colored for the rs and premier trims heated side mirrors though are going to come standard across the board and you will get integrated turn signals coming standard with the premier then take a look down at the wheel configuration 17 inch aluminum alloys coming with the ls and lt that's currently what you guys are looking at right now of course 18 inch aluminum alloys then coming with the premier and 19 inch aluminum alloys coming with the rs trim level and of course matte black side skirts to tie in with the front and about to be the back as well so having said that let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the equinox all right so but now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top there you will find a matte black shark fin antenna coming standard just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper led taillights can be had on the rs and premier they're going to come standard with those two particular trims i do like the black bow tie emblem back there it definitely ties in pretty darn good with all of the rest of our matte black accents that we have here on the equinox so i actually don't mind that but just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip And so but now since we are around back of the equinox when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is a manual tailgate for the ls and lt trim levels a power tailgate then for the rs and a hands-free power tailgate if you were to go with the premiere so i'm just going to simply lift up on the tailgate itself and that's going to be how you're going to go ahead and open this particular trim level but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 29.9 cubic feet behind that second row if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping that up to 63.9 cubic feet then there is a 12 volt power outlet you can find in that cargo area for all trim levels across the board there's some cargo lighting there are grocery bag hooks there's actually tie down anchors as well and a decent amount of in-floor storage underneath of that cargo floor which is surprising to see that much in-floor storage so definitely a big fan of that then make our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at a very impressive 39.9 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in those rear seats rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard across the board rear ventilation also coming standard big fan of that you don't always get that believe it or not in all suvs out there so i'm going to emphasize that you will get two usb charging ports coming standard as well and you can actually get heated rear seats if you were to go with the premier it's going to be an option for the premier trim level so that's going to be there for you as well but then make our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating does come with our ls trim level that we have here today LT trim level is going to add to that eight-way power driver's seat, which is optional on the LS, by the way. We do have that option. Our S trim level is going to add to that heated front seats, and the Premier is going to add leather seating. And the ventilated front seats are going to be optional. As far as seat comfort goes, I actually really like the bolsters on the sides there. It kind of holds you in place pretty darn well. And because we have the power adjustable seats, I would say seating was plenty comfortable, especially the lumbar support as well. So big fan of the seating, actually. Then take and look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is going to be leather wrapped for the rs premier and optional then on the lt so we have a urethane wrapped steering wheel because we have the ls here today you can actually get a heated steering wheel that is going to come standard on the premier trim level if you wanted to go that route then but now making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your chevy bow tie logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock and unlock and there is a push button start for every single trim level across the board a remote start then 
for the RS and Premier. So since we have the LS, I'm just gonna put my phone to the brake here and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel, giving you things like your tire pressure information. There is a digital speedometer if you wanted to display that, trip A, trip B, of course, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, your oil life indicator, I always loved that one. And the list goes on, pretty much everything you could possibly want on that little digital portion of the gauges there. Then make your way to overall interior quality. A panoramic sunroof is going to be optional on the LT, RS, and Premier. Overhead sunglass holder is going to come on the LT trim level and up. Universal home remote coming with the Premier trim level only, meaning the garage door openers, of course. Dual zone climate control coming with the RS and Premier trim levels. Just in front of the shifter, you're going to find some rubberized storage so you can put your cell phone there and it won't slide around. You have a phone charging port, USB charging port, aux port and 12 volt power outlets and pretty much all your options up there you do have two cup holders directly beside the shifter there a little bit of storage behind all of that and within the center armrest a very very deep storage within that center armrest kind of more than i expected there with a little tray up top and actually led lighting within there as well so very impressed with the storage within the center armrest but overall when it comes to overall interior quality i do like the two-tone color option that we have here today with the black and the gray that definitely looks good i like the soft touch leather on the doors as well one of the room for improvements i would say is this matte black plastic located around the cup holders and the shifter here wouldn't have minded if that was finished even if they kept it plastic if it was finished in like some kind of design to kind of give it a little bit more pizzazz or a little more uniqueness to it but other than that it'll certainly get the job done but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the ls lt and rs trims eight inch color touchscreen display coming then with the premier trim level bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay coming standard for every single trim level across the board. Well done, Chevy. I think just about the majority of manufacturers do not put wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for all trim levels. That's an option typically at the very highest trim. So well done, Chevy, for pulling that off. I am impressed. Factory navigation system is going to be optional on the Premier trim level. You could check out your climate control information up there as well and your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems six speakers is actually going to come standard on every single trim level across the board but there is an optional seven speaker Bose sound system that goes for $1,125. That's not the one we have today. Obviously we have the six speaker sound system. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Can you tell I love San Holo? That was crazy, man. One of my favorite EDM bands, seriously. But dang, that sounded, I don't know if maybe it was the song. That sounded pretty darn good in the Equinox. I gotta be honest because there was a decent amount of bass, decent amount of clarity. I had it up pretty high, but still, that was a decent sound system for six speakers, if I'm being honest. I don't mind that. And again, this song's awesome. Anyways, last thing I'm gonna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Equinox in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the 2021 Equinox was an IIHS top safety pick. The 2022 model hasn't yet been tested, but I would imagine it would be at least that, if not better. That's typically the trend vehicles go with. Front side, side current airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a following distance indicator, forward collision alert, front pedestrian braking, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, and lane departure warning then as well. And if you were to go with the RS trim level and up, that is going to add to that front and rear parking sensors, lane change alert with side blind zone alert, and rear cross traffic alert as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, the redesign of the new Equinox definitely makes it look a heck of a lot more upscale. I particularly like the headlights it has a nice design and the leds that come standard across the board is definitely a good thing as well the main one of the main selling points of the equinox for me though is the wireless android auto apple carplay again very few vehicles even right now are making wireless android auto apple carplay standard across the board you typically still have to plug in your phone via usb cable to the actual vehicle in order to utilize that so love that it's wireless also very good rear seat room 39.9 inches of rear legroom 
there's really quite a good number, especially considering the segment that this particular SUV is in. So very impressed there. As far as room for improvement goes, wouldn't have minded seeing some digital gauges. I know so many other manufacturers right now, even in their base models, even in their less expensive vehicles, are putting digital gauges standard. And I like that because it's more customization available with them. Ambient lighting will be nice, although we don't expect it at this particular price point. And if you were to compare this to some of the other competition, it does come in a little bit pricier than some of the other competition. So do want to mention that as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new Equinox in the comments section below. I always love reading your comments. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.